Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. I've got a fun one for you today because we're going to look at some giant snake TikToks and try to figure out fact from fiction. Let's dive in. <laughs> Taiping is in Malaysia, so that's part of the reticulated pythons natural range. And I guess that's just something that happens there. The only real question I have with that is would your insurance cover it for you? I really like that one because it's obviously fake and they've got this, they've done this mock-up of a giant snake on the beach and the sand is totally fine next to it. So this giant, you know, 50 ton snake has crawled up there and left no tracks in the sand. It doesn't make any sense, but it's still entertaining. That's a big snake. And this snake species actually has the highest venom yield of any snake in Australia. I don't know what to say about that one. It's not in Australia. <laughs> it's a reticulated pipe and again, but that is a really cool example of how they climb trees in the wild. Smaller arboreal snakes like North American rat snakes and stuff like that have a ridge down their ventral scales and they use that to wedge themselves between the bark and they can just scale up the front of a tree. But reticulated pythons are a little bit too big, a little bit too heavy, and they just go up, like, do a loop, bring the body up, do another loop, or a coil, I guess you should say, like a spring, and push themselves up the tree, so that's pretty cool to see. During World War II, there was a colonel who flew over there, who him and his two passengers in the plane both reported a hundred foot long snake. They flew over it once, went, what is that? And flew over it two more times to verify it and got so low to the ground that they said the snake struck at the airplane and all three people, the pilot, this well-respected colonel and the two passengers had the exact same story of this giant snake in Central Africa. Interesting. Yeah, and yet no big snake has ever been proven from there. But it's also a very poorly biologically explored area. So I've featured that clip in a couple of videos already, I think, and I mean, I gotta say I admire his optimism, because it would be amazing to discover a giant snake. But there's a couple of things that I have a problem with when it comes to this particular myth or record, however you want to regard it. First is, a snake that big would eat a huge amount at certain times. So the thing that people always say to me, they, they always counter and say, well, actually snakes have a very low metabolic rate. They don't need to eat much and they can go a year fasting or whatever. And that's kind of true most of the time. But when pythons, like even our captive pythons, like bull pythons and Burmese pythons, get ready to breed the females, they build follicles first. They need a lot of food at this time. They take in a lot of food. They get ridiculously hungry. And sometimes they'll put on, you know, 20% at least of body weight just from building those follicles and being ravenously hungry for a couple of months. So if you had a snake that big out in the Congo, it would be stealing herds of cows when it, when it came to reproduce. So it would, it would get noticed, it would get noticed quite quick. And we've got this kind of antiquated view of the Congo, it seems, in some countries still where we think it's like another planet or the, the, the land that time forgot. But it's important to remember that it's a very densely populated area, a lot of parts of the Congo. And um, there's also a lot of people with mobile phones there. I mean, there's literally tens of millions of mobile phones registered in the region. So, you know, someone would get a photo of it or something. Anything's possible, but I'm going to say it's unlikely for this one. Malaysia seems like an exciting place. Two retics in the ceiling for the price of one. Photos captured the hair-raising moment when an 18-foot-long python attempted to get in through a bedroom window. The residents of the house successfully fought off the 38-kilo albino Burmese python with a broom handle before the owner arrived to collect it. I think that would be a nice surprise. The giant snake comes to keep you company. I understand that most people don't always feel that way. 
When a snake is eating something really big, it has the ability to completely open its entire jaw. They can do this because their jaw bones aren't rigidly fixed to their skull. Instead, they're connected with flexible ligaments that can stretch and move. Once the head of the prey is inside their mouth, strong muscles inside the snake contract in a wave-like motion. This pushes the animal down the esophagus and into the stomach. Oh, I thought that was pretty good information. Welcome to Australia, where five meter long snakes aren't that uncommon. This huge carpet snake was spotted slithering from one rooftop to another in Queensland. The advice from locals? Be brave! Hmm. I didn't think carpet pythons got to five meters long. I thought that they were, I don't know, up to four meters, maybe, maximum. Anyway, we got 27 good. Whoa! I looked at the, as soon as I my eyes shift off of her, see how smart this snake is? The second I shifted my eyes off, she knew that I wasn't ready to jump, almost smoked me. That, I mean, that is incredible. So, that was crazy. You guys just saw one of the closest strikes I've had in a long time. What do you all think? Is she going to get him one day for good? That was a reticulated python that had obviously got stuck on something underwater and passed away. Uh, it obviously drowned and it's kind of interesting because it does look from a distance like it's swimming but it's it's not swimming it's had a bad day all right i'm on soy they want and there's a big giant ball python i think that's a python or a uh, whatever big big ass snake <laughs> in thailand <laughs> i'm pretty close that is a decent sized snake you can tell by the windows in the background at first and possibly by that railing next to it as well that is a decent sized snake Take a look at that. So what he'll do is he'll wrap these coils up around the tree and propel himself up. Take a look at him. Wow, you can see that shimmer. And the reason why they get that name, Amethystine Python. The longest snake in Australia and the biggest scrub python that I've ever found. He's going after this, mate. Wow. Coil after coil. I know this is about giant snakes, the video of course, but I put the scrub python in because basically it's been divided into a few different species now. Um, the Australian scrub python isn't actually technically the amethystine python, but that's a, a long story and it's something people argue about all the time. But there's, there's some records of scrub pythons getting to, I think one was recorded at 24 feet and one was recorded at 26 feet. And these records are really dubious, they're from like the 1950s, they're by one guy and I think, you know, for some reason they took these accounts seriously. But the best modern record, the biggest modern record that was actually verified to a good degree was 18 and a half feet long. And there's lots of people that still consider them, and you see information online all the time, to be one of the world's largest snakes, saying that they still, you know, reach over 20 feet and sometimes... Um, could possibly reach 26 feet but I just don't see it myself I just don't know anyone who's seen one that big and I've never seen a modern um, account of someone finding one that big so I'd be really interested to hear from anyone who does work with them or who's found one in the wild that they think topped 18 feet okay what do we have here whoa guys check that out this guy's found a massive rock python and it's even attacking the car guys it's even attacking the car Nah, guys, I'm out. I'm out. I think that definitely was a rock python. Let me know what you think. Anacondas are the heaviest snakes in the world, but we really honestly don't know how big they truly get. They are masters of camouflage for their size. You only see its head here, and it lunges out of the water. Look at how much comes out, and that's not even a quarter of its body. Now, the longest anaconda verified on record was 27 feet and almost 800 pounds. 
but there have been unconfirmed reports of them being 30 plus feet. But when you're a very large snake that lives mostly in the water and can camouflage yourself very well and live in very remote parts of the Amazon, I mean, who knows how long this snake is, you never know how big they can truly get. Maybe one day we'll get a true absolute monster. I mean, this look at the size of this thing. What I'll say about the anacondas is that they need a lot of habitat, a lot of space, and a lot of time to grow really huge. Um, they're long-lived animals, and they, they grow for years, and they need to be, you know, not disturbed by people. So, maybe there are giant ones out there still. Really, it's very rare to see them over 18 foot long now. But, if you do want to find one, you want to find a giant, I'd say you better do it quick their habitat is being torn into from all sides and the giant ones if they are out there they're not going to be out there for long life does not oh my god oh my god Bro. that was cool i put a boa constrictor in because i know they're not the most giant snakes but i still kind of count them as a giant snake uh, that was a common boa, boa constrictor imperator, and that is a pretty decent size for one of them. <laughs> what the f- Like, when does it get to a point where these chiropractic videos just, like, completely go off the edge? I know for a damn fact that that snake did not tell you its back is hurting. Like, how do you even know it's hurting in the first place? Like, this doesn't- couldn't have said it better myself. I think this is the biggest anaconda ever seen. Yeah, that did look like a decent size to me. I honestly couldn't tell you how long that one was. I mean, it was definitely a big snake. Really, actually, my main question of that clip is whether it's actually crushing it in that thing or whether it's just holding it with a bunch of vegetation and going to put it down and the snake will be okay. I don't know. I don't know what happened afterwards. Good job. Good job. <laughs> That's another one I've seen loads of times, but I still like it. So much fun. Burmese pythons are kind of clumsy oafs, a bit like the Labradors of the snake world. That is interesting actually, the um, anacondas, crocodiles, caiman, alligators, all of them are much less likely to strike at you if you're underwater. It's like they've got this instinct to hunt at the water's edge and that's where they like to grab stuff. So bizarrely he's actually pretty safe there. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, please do like, comment and subscribe. And if you have any requests, just tell me in a comment and I'll be happy to get to them as soon as I possibly can. Thank you very much.